What's up everyone? My name is Saad Saleem and today the topic that we're going to be studying is indices. And it's, uh, it's, it's not pronounced indices, it's pronounced indices. So there are a couple of rules that we, we're going to learn first. We're going to try and cover examples along with the rules. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first write down the rule and then we're going to do an example related to it. All right, so let's get started without any time to waste. So rule number one. All right, so rule number one says that when same bases are multiplied, same bases. Now, by the way, let's just figure it out. What's base and what's index? Now, A right here is our base, right? A right here is our base and M is our power. Now, power or we also call it index. Index is singular and indices is plural. So here's the story. When same bases are multiplied, the powers, or you can say the indices are added together. So for example, say you're given two power three times two power four, and you're asked to write it down as a single base with one power. So what are you gonna do is, you're gonna say fine, same bases, so I'm just gonna add the two powers. So three plus four is gonna be equal to seven. So this is how we can use rule number one. And you can also do the same with, uh, with unknowns. Just for example, if you have, let's say x cubed, times x power two. So this, the same basis, since we are multiplying the same basis, the powers are gonna be added and we're gonna get x power five. So that's rule number one. All right, now rule number two. Now rule number two says, if same bases are divided, what did I say? If same bases are divided, so the powers get subtracted. Now you have two ways that you can do this. If you wish to keep the numerator as it is, then you're gonna bring the power in the denominator and subtract it from the power in the numerator, right? So that's one way of doing it. And there's another way of doing this is that if you wish to remove the numerator and take it down in the denominator, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep the base in the numerator and the power as it is. And from the power of the denominator, you're gonna subtract the power of the numerator. So let's just, let's just further cement this with the help of an example. So say you have, First, I'm going to do an example that's uh, that's related to this exam that's related to this format. So let's say you have three power five over three power two, right? So this you can write as three power five minus two, which is going to become which is going to become three power three, right? Which you can later evaluate if the question is asked you too. Or suppose you have let's say let's say you have two power eight over two power 11. Now you don't, you don't want to see the power as a negative. It doesn't look very nice. So instead, what you're gonna do is you're gonna say, fine, I'm just gonna get rid of the numerator altogether and I'm gonna take it in the numerator. So what, you, what you're doing here is you're gonna let two power 11 be as it is and from it, you're gonna subtract eight. So what's 11 minus eight? 11 minus eight is equal to two cube, which you can later on evaluate if you wish and write this as one over eight. And this also, I'm gonna write down the evaluated version. So that's gonna be equal to 27, right? So that's rule number two for you. Okay, now, rule number three. All right, so rule number three says that if you have same powers, but different bases, and the two are being multiplied together. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna simply multiply the bases together and raise them to the common power that we have. For example, for example, say you have, three cube times two cube, all right? So what you're gonna do here is, you're gonna see that since we have the same powers, you're simply gonna multiply three into two, and in fact, let me just write it as it is, three times two, and then I'm gonna raise it to the power of three. So what happens next, three times two can be evaluated, and this, kind of, this is gonna become six, so six to the power three, which you can evaluate if you wish to write it. Uh, actually, that depends on the question. So if the question is asked you to evaluate, you can use this rule to make it easier for you. So now, all right, so rule number four. It's very similar to rule number three, except that uh, a, this is related to when the two are being multiplied and this is related to when the two are being divided. So here it goes. If you have same, if you have different bases, if you have different bases with the same powers that are being divided, right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna divide the bases first and whatever result that you get, you're gonna raise that result to a common power. For example, say you're given eight, cubed divided by four cubed. Now you can see that the bases are different. However, the powers are the same. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna first figure out what eight divided by four is, and whatever that turns out to be, I'm gonna raise it to the power of three, since three is a common power. So eight divided by four, I can see is two, and I'm gonna raise two to the power of three. So what is that equal to? That's equal to eight. Again, that depends. Uh, if the question's asking you to write it as a single base with the power, so you're gonna leave it here. If the question's asking you to evaluate, so you're gonna obviously give the value, give the ending value, which is equal to eight. All right, rule number five. Anything, I repeat, absolutely anything raised to the power of zero is equal to one. 
So let's just let's just elaborate this and see why does that happen. So say you have 2 cube over 2 cube. Now if I evaluate this, this becomes 8 over 8, which is equal to 1, right? But if I use rule number 2 to figure this out, I know that this is going to become 2 to the power 3 minus 3. Now what's 2 to the power 3 minus 3 equal to? That's equal to 2 power 0, which I can see is equal to what? Is equal to 1, right? So that's rule number 5 for you. All right, so rule number six, rule number six starts, uh, rule number six states that if you have one as your base and irrespective of whatever power you raise it to, right? Be it one, two, three, hundred, minus one, minus two, minus one hundred makes absolutely no difference. The answer is, all, is always gonna be equal to one and that makes sense as well. Why? Because if you have one, so it doesn't matter how many times you multiply one with itself or how many times you divide one by itself, the answer will always, always be equal to one. Hence the rule. All right, now rule number seven. Now rule number seven says, that if you have a base and it's raised to a negative power, right? Now it could be anything, it could be negative one, negative two, negative three, whatever, or it could be a negative fraction as well. If you wish to make the power positive, so what you're gonna have to do is, you're gonna have to take the reciprocal of it. Now what is reciprocal? Reciprocal is the process in which the numerator becomes the denominator and the denominator becomes the numerator. So here I can see, since I just have a, so once I take the reciprocal of it, it's gonna become one over a. So, which is why the power has from negative turned to positive. Now, a, a common error that students make here is that they take the reciprocal of the power as well. Now that's absolutely, absolutely wrong. So here's how this works, say you have, a to the power minus two. What is this gonna become? This is gonna become a to the power positive two. Let's do it with numbers as well. Say you have three to the power minus two. So if I, if I wanna evaluate this, I can't evaluate it the way it is. So first thing I need to do is I need to make the power positive. So that's gonna become one over three squared. So what's one over three squared? Once I evaluate it, it's gonna be equal to one over nine. Now, say you have a fraction that's raised to a negative power. For example, say you have three over four, raised to the power of negative two. Now I can't evaluate this. This bracket shows that this three and the four in the denominator, both of them are raised to the power of negative two. So what I'm gonna do here is that first things first, I'll take the reciprocal. And what that does for me is it changes the power from negative to positive. So what's the square of four equal to? That's equal to 16. What's the square of three equal to? That's equal to nine, right? So that's how this works. All right, so rule number eight. Rule number eight says that if you have a base that's already raised to a certain power, and all of that is raised to another power. So what happens? The two powers, they get multiplied. So for example, say you have x cubed, and this is being further squared. So what does that mean? That means this three, which is in the power, and this two, which is also a power, they're both gonna get multiplied, and this is gonna give me x power six. Let's do another example with numbers. So say you have two square, and that's raised to, that's further raised to a power of four. So what's that gonna do is, it's gonna make it two to the power of eight. Two and four get multiplied. If you're interested in finding out why that is, so basically two power four, uh, two square power four means that two square multiplied by itself four times. So two square, two square, two square, two square. Right? So as you can see, this is gonna become two to the power two plus two plus two plus two. So basically I'm just adding two four times. So what does that mean? That means, this is gonna be equal to two to the power of eight. Oops, I can do better than that. Two to the power of eight, right? So that's how this works. All right, so rule number nine. Rule number nine says, that if you have a base that raised to a power, and that power happens to be a fraction. So what you're gonna do is, whatever the numerator is, you're gonna raise your base to that power, and whatever the denominator is, you're gonna take that root of it. So here I can see, that the numerator is m and the denominator is n. So a is raised to the power of m, and then I'm gonna take the nth root of it. For example, say you have, let's say, eight raised to the power of two over three. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take eight, I'm gonna square it, and whatever the result turns out to be, I'm gonna take the cube root of it, right? So here, since eight is a relatively smaller number, I can very conveniently figure out what the square of eight is gonna be, so that's gonna be 64, and the cube root of 64, you guys should know that, uh, the cube root of 64 is equal to four, right? You guys should be able to do that without a calculator. So, but this was a smaller number. Now, what if the number is very large? Like, for example, say you have, um, nine raised to the power of three 
over 2, right? What are you going to do now? So 9 raised to the power 3 over 2 means that basically you're going to take 9, you're going to cube it, and then you're going to take the square root of it. Now, some of you may already remember the cube of 9, and that's excellent, you should. But what about the square root of whatever that number happens to be? So I don't remember that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the square root of 9 first because that's going to make things a lot easier to deal with. So I'm going to take the square root of 9 first. Remember, I'm, I'm going to solve this part first. So if I take the square root of 9 first, that's equal to 3, but that's not the end because I still have to cube it. So what's the cube of 3? That's equal to 27. So 9 raised to the power 3 over 2 is basically equal to 27. So let's do another example to further cement this. Say you have 125 raised to the power of 2 over 3, right? And you want to figure out what this is. So that means that I'll take 125 and I'm going to square it. And then I'm going to take the cube root of it. Now, who knows what the square of 125 is? If you do, that's excellent. But I don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first figure out what the cube root of 125 is. So the cube root of 125 is 5. That you should remember. You should always remember squares up to 20. Uh, if you can do more than that, excellent. And cube roots up to, uh, uh, sorry, uh, cubes up to at least 15. Okay. So where was I? Yeah. So the cube root of 125 is 5, and then I'm going to square it. So what's the square of 5? The square of 5 is going to be equal to 25, right? So rule number 10. Now rule number 10 is not like the rules that we've covered so far. It's basically a procedure through which we're going to learn how to solve questions like these. So say you have 2 power x equals to 8, and your job is to figure out what the value of x is equal to. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to see that if, is there a, if there is a way that you can make the basis same on both sides of the equals to sign. So here's what you're going to think. You're going to say, okay, fine, can I write 8 as a power of, uh, can I write 2 as a power of 8? So, well, you can, but that's going to make things a lot more complex. However, what's a lot easier is writing 8 as a power of 2, which can be done by taking the cube of 2. If you know your cubes well, you should know that 2 cube is equal to 8. So the reason why I've done this is so that I could make basis the same. And a lot of students at this point say that basis cancel. Well, we're not actually canceling the basis. What we're doing is we're just ignoring the basis and comparing the powers, which leads to the conclusion that x is equal to 3. So here we have the value of x, which is equal to 3. Now let's do another example. It may not, uh, it may not be as clear in the first attempt, but that's OK. So say you have 3 power x is equal to 27, all right? And again, your task is to figure out the value of x. So no big deal, 3 and 27. Ideally, I'd prefer writing 27 to the power of 3. And again, if you know your cubes well, you should know that the cube of 3 is equal to 27, all right? Now, I can't just ignore them the way they are right now, right? Both of them need to be in the numerator as we saw earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, fine, let 3 power x be as it is. and if I wish to bring this 3 power 3 in the numerator, so I'm going to have to make use of this rule here. And in here, we're working with this rule in the uh, in the opposite direction, right? We did that a power minus x is equal to 1 over a power x. So if I wish to take a power x in the numerator, I'm going to have to change the sign of the power. So if I, if I take 3 cube in the numerator, it's going to be 3 to the power minus 3. So 3 and 3 can gets, can, uh, gets ignored and x is equals to minus 3. So there you have it. The value of x is negative 3. So these were the first 10 basic rules of indices. I'm going to stop here. And if you guys liked this video and if everything's crystal clear, make sure that you hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, now is a good time. Also, make sure that you share this video with your friends, classmates, and whoever you think can possibly benefit from it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, take care. Allah Hafiz.